Greetings everybody, Maximus here with a short but an absolutely shocking news update on the Max's worldwide certification process. On June 20th, I published a video on the speculation that the EASA in Canada were going to require much more than a simple software upgrade before they would let the Max occupy their respective airspaces again. Well, now comes confirmation from Dominic Gates of the Seattle Times, and I gotta tell you, even I was shocked when the other shoe dropped in this announcement. I can't wait to hear your thoughts, especially those of you in Europe and Canada. Real quick before we start, if you enjoy the content here in the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And of course, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you can be notified every time we release new content. Thanks for watching. Aviation safety regulators in Canada and Europe are playing hardball with Boeing. They have finally publicly released the fixes they require Boeing to make. They have demanded that Boeing make major design changes to the flight control systems on the Boeing 737 MAX that go way beyond reprogramming of the MCAS flight control system that of course killed 346 people. They inform both Boeing and the FAA that they must come up with design upgrades to meet the new safety requirements of global safety regulators. However, what they said next absolutely shocked me. All three global regulators have agreed that Boeing will be required to make these additional design changes and retrofits to the worldwide fleet only after the MAX returns to service. They didn't go into depth as to a time frame for the additional changes required. But the bottom line here is that it will be allowed to fly in Europe and Canada while the upgrades are being implemented. The order changes and upgrades to the flight control systems highlight flaws in the 737's avionics systems that Boeing worked so hard to bury from the beginning of the MAX program. There's no doubt fixes will add substantial costs to the MAX's program and will surely slow the pace of Boeing's ongoing plans to ramp up deliveries, which certainly will not help Boeing's urgent need to alleviate its cash flow problems due to the two initial MAX crashes and the more recent industry woes due to the global pandemic. Boeing has already developed a solution for the new MCAS flight control system that, of course, was at the root cause of the crashes. However, Janet Northcote, head of communications at the European Aviation Safety Agency, said, While MCAS absolutely needs to be fixed for the plane to be recertified as airworthy, there are other issues in some way related to the angle of attack sensors problem. By themselves, these would not create a safety critical issue, Northcote said. It's when they come together with something critical at the same time that is a major issue. All three regulators will allow the MAX back into service without the additional fixes in place, officials said in interviews this week. Boeing has proposed that when the MAX initially starts flying again, it will be enough to make changes to the flight manual and pilot training so crews are aware of the potential problems and know how to respond. EASA believes this provides adequate mitigation in the short term. However, further down the road, we think the design enhancements are needed, said Northcote. Boeing has made some proposals for permanent fixes that their regulators are currently reviewing. The Europeans are backing up their earlier tough talk about how they would approach Boeing and the FAA going forward in the wake of the MAX disasters. These recent demands mark a new aggressive tone by foreign regulators. After the crashes that killed 346 people and the consequent close security that uncovered new problems with the MAX one after another, the EASA has publicly stated on many occasions they no longer will simply abide by the decisions of the FAA. The FAA declined to comment on the ongoing review of the proposed design changes. However, a person familiar with the FAA's deliberations said the U.S. agency will require Boeing to come up with a fix for all three of the issues raised. Two sources familiar with the discussion said regulators want the permanent design changes done on a relatively tight timetable. We are looking for this to be implemented at the latest by the time of the certification of the 737 MAX 10, a source said. Once again, as the saying goes, the cover-up is always worse than the crime. What Boeing is being forced to do now is what many Boeing engineers and pilots begged them to do before the first 737 MAX ever took to the skies. 
Sadly, had Boeing fixed all these issues in the beginning, instead of criminally covering them up in order to catch up to the Airbus's NEO launch, 346 people would still be alive today. So in the end, it's going to cost Boeing more time and money than it would have at the outset of the MAX program. They will eventually fix the MAX airplanes and all their problems, and it probably will be a safe plane to fly. However, there's no amount of money that could ever bring back the lives of 346 people. Well, that's it for me. Sorry to end there on such a heavy note, but like I've said so many times in the past, this just didn't have to happen. Anyway, I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Let me know down below. Be sure to subscribe, like, share, ring the bell. And as always, until next time, remember, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you in the air. Yeah, this Maximus. <laughs>